Hey guys, it's Jim G, or Coach Jim as many of my students like to call me. And today, what I'm going to do is something a little bit different. And what that is, is I am just going to provide a video walkthrough of how to create a listing on Airbnb. Now, don't get me wrong. And I show my students how to do that all the time. And we have that module in our in our training academy. But this module is a little bit different. Why? Because this is for people that are not in the training academy. And um, it's really just to help folks out that are looking to just know how to get a listing up and get it up quickly and make it effective. Right. Uh, so that they're generating some income. Right. Now, it's not designed to show you all the optimization and things like that that I do inside the academy for my students, but it's going to be still better than what most people will get just trying to go on Airbnb, look at what other people are doing and then trying to guess, right? You don't need to do that. Um, so, um, so if nothing else, I'll show you how to do this. You'll start making some money and a couple other things will happen. One, you may want to, you know, come over and, and, and get some more information on really how to scale your business and, and really go from just making a few dollars, you know, a few hundred dollars a, a month extra to making a few thousand dollars a month extra. But that's not what I'm here to do, really. I'm not here to sell you anything. I just want to give some good free information away um, for a couple reasons, too. One, because you, you got to give back. Once you've had success, you got to give back. And then uh, two is because, you know, it's nice. Airbnb also rewards me to help train you guys as well. So, but they also reward you for going through this training because I'll show you that in a minute as well. They give you, um, um, they're giving you some free dollars when you first uh, uh, create your listing and, and get your first booking. So they'll actually give you uh, $50 for doing that. So it's, it's kind of great. Um, so it's a win-win situation and that's what this is all about. So, all right, so let's, um, let's get started. First, let's let let's also talk about what qualifies me to be able to do this. Um, this is one of my Airbnb accounts. And last year, it shows that I generated um, $145,000 on this account. Now, just to give you some idea, like I was expecting this year, last year in 2020 to do 145, I mean, 180,000. But COVID hit and, um, and in the months of, um, in the months of, March, April, May, and June, I made a lot less than what I was expecting to make uh, in uh, during those months because they shut the world down. And, and actually, most Airbnb hosts um, actually went to zero during the months of April, May, and June um, after they they you know after the COVID virus hit in March, uh, mid March. So when they stopped vacation travels, when they stopped tourism, everyone for the most part went to zero. And by the grace of God. I didn't go to zero. I didn't make as much as I was expecting, but I didn't go to zero. And, you know, there's a number of reasons why. And part of that is why why you're here today. And um, and but just to give you some idea also of what the potential is here on, you know, with Airbnb in July, I got back to where I should have been. Well, let's take you to April. In April, as I said, I didn't make anywhere close to where I what I expected to make. Um, and. I only did $5,800 in, in April. In May, I did 6,800. In June, I did 10,296. And then in July, I got back to where I should have been back in April, May, and June. And I ended the month at 15,770 on this account. In August, 19,221, I ended the month. In September, I ended the month at 15,123. October, 17,206. In November, I ended the month at 12,880. In December, I ended the month at 14,254. And right now, I we we're at the last day of February, and I'm just under ten thousand dollars. So I'm at nine thousand nine. I'm sorry, nine thousand eight hundred and fifty-six dollars. And so. Um, I know there's a couple bookings coming through today, so chances are I'm going to at least top 10,000 for the month of, of uh, February. But March, I'm already at 7,800. And what I expect to do um, this month in March is somewhere between 15 and, um, and 17, 18,000, 
like we did in um, January. I ended the month in January at 17,205. So, um, so year to date right now, currently year to date, I'm at just under uh, 40,000. I'm at 39,894. And what I'm expecting this year, barring any unforeseen tragedies like we had last year or catastrophes, um, I should do about $200,000 in this account. So that gives you some idea as to what is possible when you when you do this correctly, right? Most people I can tell you don't even come close to that because they're just, you know, they're just kind of dilly dallying around and, and just trying to follow a few people out on Airbnb that are not really doing it properly and they don't know who really they're following they're just creating a listing the way they see it on airbnb and that that's not that's not correct so so that kind of qualifies me to help you create a listing right um but also what also qualifies me is this and this is what you're going to be interested in as well is um Airbnb does provide you with stats every day as to what your performance is when it comes to your um, your listings. And what it shows uh, me, and all my students are the same way too, but what it shows me is that um, it, it shows us here, how do I compare with other listings in my area? And so the black is me and the, the gray is other listings. And it's showing that my average page views it, it averages anywhere from about about seven thousand dollars seven thousand um, views per week right that's that's me compared to average other listings that are similar to mine in my area they average about 20 about two thousand so I'm averaging over five thousand more views per week than other listings in my area that are similar to mine it's telling me here that my average page views are over 20 are tw over 24,000 page views higher than similar listings in my area. So again, what did that why is that relevant? Well, because if you got that many more views, right? That many more views than than people in your area other similar listings that means you're going to get more inquiries and if you're getting more inquiries you're going to get more bookings and if you get more bookings you're going to make more money right and so that's one of the reasons why um the forbes article um that is is here talks about why i'm one of the top percent of all airbnb income earners in the world right and um and that's Honestly, just this account, not including, not even counting my other accounts, but that's just this account. So again, with Airbnb passive, in, I mean, Airbnb, I, I say passive income because that's what we do in the academy. I, I teach Airbnb passive income. But so if I, if I, if I say that, please, you know, that's not what you guys are doing. You guys are really just learning to put up a listing and get it running so that you can generate some income and and that's it like that's the start of how all this stuff works you got to at least be able to do that and then when you can do that you can build on it as well right so let's get let's get started so when you want to create a listing what you want to do is you want to go to your Airbnb account so if you don't already have one, you just go you go ahead and log in. Oh, and one of the things I'm also going to provide you guys, just so you know, is I'm going to provide you with a nice little cheat sheet, a free cheat sheet. You'll be able to just download it and and it's going to it's going to give you like all the 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 um, steps that I'm going to walk you through as well so that you don't have to watch the video every time. You can just as you're as you're doing it, you can watch the video, listen to it, and then as you're doing um, your listing, you could just follow along in the cheat sheet as well. Okay. And it'll just kind of outline some things for you. It'll be a nice little PDF download. And again, it's all free stuff. Um, this is, this is great. It's my way of giving back. Um, Airbnb gives you a little bit of money. They give me a little bit of money, but at least it's a little bit. I figure I could provide you with some good resources, right? That, uh, will give you significantly more value than that $50 that, um, you know, that they're, they're giving. So, um, so that's it. So when you create the Airbnb listing, what you're going to do is you're going to log in to your Airbnb account. And if you don't have an Airbnb account, it's okay. 
Um, we're going to talk a little bit about getting that set up. But if you don't have an air, if um, but if you do have an Airbnb account, then there's a couple things you're going to want to do. The first thing is you want to create a um, a host account because you may have already um, created a, an Airbnb account because you've been traveling like most people do. And um, but you want to create a host account, and this is what you do to create a host account. Um, go to this link right here. It's called. Um, it's right here actually on my website here and it's jimgcoachingclub.com forward slash become dash a dash host right so go there and then what that's going to do is that's going to provide you with a couple of things um first thing it's going to provide you with is it's going to give you the opportunity now to um to sign up for an Airbnb hosting account. It's free, you don't have to pay anything for it. And the other thing is, is it tells you a little bit about me as as one of the Airbnb ambassadors. As I said, they, they give me a couple bucks too, just like they're giving you a couple bucks to, um, to help you guys. And I mean, they're smart. They know that that $50 that they're giving us, what they're gonna be making over the next year, two, three years, they only get three cents on every dollar that we make. So when you list or when I list, uh, put a listing up and then I get a, a booking for every dollar I make, they get three cents. That's it. So, but they recognize if you're making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars over the years for a thousand dollars, they're only, they're only getting 30, $30 from us. Right. But over the years, over time, over the months, that little 50 bucks that they're giving away, they're going to make that over and over and over and over again. Right. And, um, and so, and they also make some money on, on, on the, uh, guest, you know, when the guest books as well. So, so that's, you know, they're smart and, you know, it's no big deal because it doesn't cost us really anything. We're going to make a lot more than they make and they're making on that listing, but let's take advantage of it. It's free, right? It's free money. So let's go get it. What's important right now is you getting your profile so that we, you can start generating income because, I mean, that's all nice. It's all wonderful that I have, you know, I'm making money and, you know, I'm one of the, the top hosts on Airbnb and a top income earners on Airbnb throughout the world. And I got all kinds of great, um, you know, uh, page views. But the fact of the matter is if you go through this and you're not getting results, it doesn't even matter. Right. So the key is let's get you your account and let's get you results. Right. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to go here and you're going to go create your listing. Right. So um, you can message me as well. It says here and um, once you want, you know, as an Airbnb ambassador, because you use this, I'm going to know. And and um, and with that, that's, um, you know, when you do that, let me know. And I'm also going to give you once you use this link. I want you to let me know, message me, let me know that you created your listing and then, um, and, and I'll give you something a little bit extra that's gonna help you um, really take this thing to the next level. Free, free resources for you, okay? So anyway, so again, it says, as an Airbnb ambassador, James uses, their, uh, uses his experience uh, to help new hosts succeed. And that's it, that's what it's all about. And um, you can message me, um, but here's the key. Right now, just create your listing. Don't worry about doing all that. Let's get you going. Um, and then right here, you want to put on, um, yes, I have an entire place. Like, so you'll start that, right? And you click on there and it says we're connecting with James. So that's kind of cool. So it lets me know. It says intro to hosting. Yep. So this is telling me I already created a listing, so it doesn't allow me to do it, but it's going to allow you to do it. Right. And then what's going to happen is it's basically just going to take you right to, uh, let's see here to this page. So it'll take you to this page and it says, let's get started. So um, in there, what you're going to do is you're going to just simply put your address in and then the address will say, I mean, whatever street you want to go, you can go, um, uh, let's see, 134 University Avenue, you could do that. Um, and that's in Rochester. I am, I'm actually in Rochester, New York for all of you guys that, uh, don't know who I am, but I'm in Rochester, New York, and um, and you don't have to put an apartment or a suite. 
Um, that's optional. Um, you don't need to do that. Later on, um, as you get more advanced, I'll show you how to use that differently, but you don't need to do that right now. Let's just keep it simple. The next step is you're going to go to um, what kind of listing, right? So you can do this whether you have an apartment or a house or or just a, you know, a private entrance for a guest where they, they, they have, um, you know, a whole area just for themselves um, or a unique space. In fact, let me tell you something. I have, I have students that actually do tents. They have a tent. So if you, you could have a tent, you can have a, um, a mobile home, a tree house. I mean, there's some crazy things out there and people from all over the world really enjoy those kinds of experiences. And, and for instance, my student that has a tent, he's create, he's got like three acres of land and he, you know, he came to me and said, Hey Jim, I got an idea. What do you think? And I said, let's test it. Let's see. Well, he put it out. I showed him how to get the listing up and running. Um, we tested it, put it out. And next thing you know, he's starting to get bookings and guess what he's getting $50 a night for a tent, $50 a night for a tent. He even said, well, you know what? This thing is going so well. Let me put a, a, a hot tub out there and then I'll, I'll add a couple more tents. And now I can have multiple listings and create a nice, a nice little community. So that's what's happening with Robert. And um, so you have like you can really get creative with this stuff when you when you're um, when you're smart. But either way, you could go with an, which more common is the apartment or the house. If you have apartment or a house or like I said, a mobile home or something like that, um, um, you can add that or trailer home um, where you may have just a, a little trailer that you're not using um, you take it for camping and things like that but you don't really use it it's just kind of being stored on your in your in your driveway or in your backyard open that thing up right open it up uh, if you got a little space and, and let people come and stay there and you can you can use that as a unique space it, it, it works right you, you be you would be surprised at the things that people throughout the country want to use, not because they're strange people. It's just sometimes they're just looking for the experience, right? They just want to, you know, they just want to experience your area, experience different things. And, um, and the beauty of it is you still get to select. You get to ask everyone what you're coming for. You want to do that. I don't care what kind of space you have, whether it's your home or whether it's um, your apartment um, or whatever, like, Ask the question, what are you here for and how many people will be staying with you? Because in that way, you will know you get to start dialoguing with folks. And when you do that, you'll know who's coming and you get to say yes or no. Right. If it seems a little strange to you, then no, <laughs> because you don't we're not doing this just to make a few bucks and create havoc in our lives. That's not it. It's 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 really supposed to be a pleasant experience all the way around. And that's that's what we do. So. All right. So let's choose house for starters. Right. If you got an apartment, choose apartment and then go here and it says, let's narrow things down. What kind of is it a house? Is it a villa? Is it a townhouse? Is it a college, a bungalow, a, a cabin? Like you get to choose all these things. Is it a hut? Is it a lighthouse? Is it a tiny house? Like it depends on where you are in the world. And I know this kind of can go for, you know, this this video will probably reach people all over the world. So it, whatever your situation is, is it a houseboat? like a farm stay, or earth house, whatever your situation is, then um, go ahead and, um, and select it. Really where I'm at, it's gonna be, we're gonna say house, okay? We'll do that. And then um, you wanna choose entire place, right? And then from there, you do, I mean, you got some options in here, but you wanna, you don't wanna go private room or shared room, cause that's a whole different thing, right? We'll, you know, that's something I talk about in, in the academy. But for now, let's just um, do entire entire place. And then, yes, it's primarily set up for guests. Or you could say, no, I keep my personal belongings here. Either way, like it's kind of cool. Why? Because most people that do Airbnb as a guest, they're going into people's private homes anyway. So they're used to people like having just their private belongings in the area as well and um so they're coming into their home a lot of times if you you have extra space um and you're not there or you're gone or you're traveling during those times you're traveling you can do that i even have students that said you know what i'm setting my place up and i'm telling my because of the numbers that i'm going to be making i'm telling my family look on these week on these days we're going to be hosting and um and we're just going to a hotel why why is that? I'm going to tell you why. Because that place that they're hosting is going to be is making them two or three times what they're paying for the hotel. So 
Like it's a nice little getaway, right, for their family, and they're making money on their home. So you can do that. It, it's it's just a great it's a great great resource. So for here, we'll just say yes. It's primarily set up for guests. You choose. It doesn't matter. Um, and when you select that, um, you go next, and um, and then you go. How many guests can your place accommodate? And so what you want to do at that point is you just decide, like, is it a twin bed you're going to have? And you think about the number of bedrooms and think about the number of, of, of bed, uh, the type of beds, the number of beds you're going to have in each room and how many people can sleep in a bed. So if it's a twin, obviously one person. If it's a full, I you could you could fit two people in a full. For a queen, same thing, you could fit two. And for a king... You know, if you got a king, I'd still just say two. If you really want to stretch, you can go three. But um, just go two for a king or a queen or a full. And then, um, and and don't forget, like, what begins to happen is if you got a futon or if you got a bunk bed or if you got a sleeper sofa, you can, you know, you can also how, um, um, count those as additional beds. And here we go. This is how... Airbnb started 11 years ago. If you have a blow up mattress, or if you want to go out and buy a nice little hundred dollar blow up mattress, they have the nice thick ones, and you can actually now call that an additional bed for people that want to come and stay. You just need to put it in the details properly, and people will know what that is, and then boom, you're good. You're good to go. It's not you're not misrepresenting. So so the number of beds. So if say you let's just go and say you got three bedrooms and you have um, you know a queen, a full and two full size, a queen, a full size, and two twins right in in those so a queen has two people um uh full size has two people and say say you only have one twin that's five five guests you can host right or if you want to add for the living room a sleeper um like a blow-up mattress and it's a queen or a king you can get those things cheap at at walmart for like a hundred bucks or less you can add an additional two guests boom right you can do that Right. So let's again, let's keep it simple. Um, we'll go back to five just for the bed. But and we won't call it a studio. We'll just call it. Uh, let's say we got three bedrooms in the home with five guests. And um, but I definitely you know, what, I want to add those extra two um, because you'll be able to make more money on here. Um, so um, just by having that that um, that uh, blow up mattress and and the beauty of that is, is that. You buy it once and it'll pay for itself 10 times over. Um, and yeah, more than that, way more than that. Um, the number of beds. So you're going to go, uh, let's see, uh, there's three beds. And, um, yep. And so we're going to say actually four beds. So four beds because we got three bedrooms and we got four beds, right? So, um, and then the num so in bedroom number one, you're gonna have one bed, and we'll say which one is it? A, fit, a massive bedroom, let's say queen size, done, right? And bedroom number two, we said there's a full, right? So that's a double, done. And um, bedroom number three, we said it's just a twin, so it's a single, done, right? And then the common space, we're gonna say it's a floor mattress, see that? It gives you that option, boom floor mattress if you got a sofa bed or a futon you call it a sofa bed or a couch right like people do that but we're not going to have people sleeping on a couch it'll be a sofa bed or a futon so sofa bed and futon or floor mattress that's it so we go um uh and it says you can add another bed so think about this uh water bed hammock so you got all this stuff too right if you have like other people coming you got a crib or any of those things you can add another bed but for now we'll just keep it simple hit done and then boom you go to next and then um, you're gonna list the number of bathrooms let's say it has 1.5 baths um, we go next and then we go uh, where's your place located so we already said it's University Avenue um, so you already put that in Right. Um, and then you just kind of click on there and it give you the actual because there's more than one university, but you'll pick which one it is. It's Rochester, New York. And then um, you go city, um, state, you check all that and then you go next. And then it's going to ask you where the um, if you know, it's going to show you the um, uh, the map pin. 
So with the map pin, you're going to have that and um, you can adjust it. Typically, you'll, you'll, if you know your area, it, you can just see where, where the pin is. It's typically in a, in a good area. If you need to uh, expand to make sure it is, you can do that. Um, uh, but then you just say, yes, that's right. Um, and then it takes you to the amenities that you want to offer. And so from an amenities perspective, there's some basic things you want to have in a place, whether it's your own workspace or whatever. But, um, you know, you want to have an iron, you want to have a hair dryer, you want to have, you don't need shampoo. Um, you can have, yep, you want to have at least a closet or some drawers. Um, you also want to have a TV. Now, um, um, and you don't need a TV in every room. You just need a TV. So if you got TV in the living room, great. Um, obviously heat. Um uh, the, well, I say obviously. I apologize for that. It's not obvious because it depends on what part of the country you're in, right? You may not need heat. So, um, but in my part of the country, definitely need heat. Wi-Fi, we def we we really want to supply that. Um, if you don't have it, it's not a deal killer, but it's just gonna it's going to um, um, reduce the number of people that are that will be coming. The reason why, because you know how we are, right? We when we travel. First thing we do when we get to our location, we're on our phones, we're on our, our, our laptops if we have them. But typically our phones do have um, Wi-Fi, so you know it allows us to do that, um, to, to have it. But if they're staying for long-term stays, a lot of times people you know, have limited data, so they don't want to kill their data. But if you don't have it, it's definitely not a deal killer. But put it in there if you do. Um, no, um, we're not providing breakfast, tea, or coffee. If you got air conditioning, you put that in there. If you got a fireplace, so you can add all those things. And then, um, and in most cases, if it's your home, it's a private, it's a private entrance. And so, um, yes, you want to put smoke detector in most places. You, you, it's required. Carbon monoxide, same thing. First aid kit, I would choose yes on there. And if you don't have one, go out and buy one. It's ten bucks. Right, it'll pay for itself. Fifteen bucks. Um, fire extinguisher. If you don't have one, don't you know you don't have to put it in. Um, but if you do, uh, go ahead and put it in. And lock on the bedroom door. Now, here's the thing: you don't need a lock on the bedroom door if 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 it's if it's the whole house. The reason being is because if it's just one person or multiple people coming from the same group, like a family or or they know each other, you don't need a lock on the door. If if you are doing you know shared housing like we showed like private rooms then you're going to want to have a lock on the door so if you're if you have a place of your own and um and you're staying there as well with folks then um um you're going to want to have at least a lock on their door because people you want people to feel safe when they come and they're sleeping at, at night right so and and again if that's something that you're interested in, just message me and I'll get you uh, some more information about how to do the shared housing one. All right. Okay. So next is um, what spaces can guests use? So um, if you have a laundry dryer, if you have a hot tub, you know, kitchen, um, if, if there's a pool, uh, laundry washer, um, parking, if there's parking space, yes. Um, there's a gym. A lot of times you may be in a, in a facility where it's just, you know, I got students that actually do their, um, their condo that they may have. And some of my students, they actually will use their timeshares. Uh, so if you have that, like, again, um, where you, you have that type of facility, then put gym in there as well. We're going to take it out for now. But, um, now here it says... You know, every month, thousands of guests search listings with accessibility features. Adding these features can help your listings. So um, you'll have the chance uh, to tell guests accessibility features. So basically, it's saying when they, if there's ever an update to accessibility features, do you want them to email you or not? I don't usually have that checked. You can check that. You could check that. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, and then that way you'll get updates. I don't really check it. Um, and then um, let's see. Living up your listing with photos. So here is where you're going to upload photos. And this is what you can do right now. What you want to do is don't let this slow you down. What we want to do is skip. Let's skip that because we don't need a photo right now. We'll get that in there later. Let's get the other stuff. Right now, what you what you want to do is you want to describe your place. And inside of my um, uh, my cheat sheet, I'm going to have... Um, I do have 
uh, descriptions that you could put in and um, but basically just describe it like uh, just simply describe what what this is going to be and you could say you know just to get started just to get the listing up like right here this says get inspiration from top rated listings on your Airbnb so boom you take this you could copy it or if you want you don't like that one you can just um, you know just copy one and um, and then just kind of change it a little bit right so you just copy this this is great copy boom paste and then say um you know you could say uh in beautiful rochester new york we have this fully furnished house looking over you know and um here i would just say near everything boom right and then if you want um you can add other other information but what you can do is just get rid of this stuff, boom, and just say, you know, all the delights of the Finger Lakes are area are close at hand, an ideal spot for family fun um, and to get away. Um, so you could just use that, you know, briefly, um, temporarily to kind of get going, but that's, that's good. It works for them and it's working. And then create a title for your listing. Here is another one, right? You could do the same thing. Canal Front Cottage, Tranquil uh, re uh, Retreat House. Like, I like all of those. They're giving you, like, good ones. So I, what I would say is, boom, peaceful. We'll go with that. Copy. And then we hit paste. And we go peaceful getaway in Rochester. In the Rochester area I'm going to actually say Rochester NY area boom you put that in there and now you got yourself um, and the reason why we put Rochester New York area is because um, that the way we do it like it comes up really well in the search listings as well right um, um, and then you can also add, once you just add um, near peaceful getaway, I'm going to take out in the, because it only gives you enough spaces in the Rochester, New York area near everything. Boom. So Rochester would take out the comma. Boom. And now it fits right near everything. Peaceful getaway, Rochester, New York area near everything. Right. We go do that. And then um, let's see. Review Airbnb guest requirements. Airbnb has requirements that all the guests must meet before they book. So, yes, this is what you want. You want to make sure they have an email address, confirm phone number, payment information, um, because this is how you're going to make sure they're not just someone, you know, doing you know, just coming and, 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 you know, trying to do some shady things, right? You don't want that. Um, so you want them to meet basically what they call this is they, you want them to be a verified guest where Airbnb's gone through and then verified their email. They verify their phone number. They've also created payment information. They verified that to make sure it's good because guess what? When someone books, Airbnb puts that money into your account, right? Um, and they put that into your account. They they take that money immediately when they book. The money goes into your account the day after they check in, right? So if it's scheduled for a check-in for tomorrow, then the day after tomorrow, the money's going into your account. That's how it works. And Airbnb does a beautiful thing because what they're going to do is they are um, um, when you when you click become a host, it's going to ask you for your basic information. And one of those things that it's also going to ask you is your bank account. You want to put that in there because 
you're not you don't want to be collecting cash from people don't do that because the beauty of this is and and again you know i i talk about airbnb passive income all the time because you like the way i have it set up i got you know multiple multiple listings and um and i really literally spend about 10 minutes a day on you know just monitoring my stuff on my apps on my phone i haven't been to one of my listings in ages and um and that's why i talk about airbnb passive income because i have people checking in and checking out every day i have electronic funds transfers from airbnb going into my account every day and it doesn't matter where i'm at in the world what i'm doing it's it it this is all happening without me being the center of attention and that's what airbnb passive income is all about because when you do it the right way when you do it that way now you now have a business that revolves not around you you have a business now that's that's set up and designed to do what it was designed to do if that's what you want it to do which is to provide you with financial freedom financial independence so you're not having to punch a clock or get on that hamster wheel and it supports the vision that god's given you for your life and your family right and and many of many of of my students we have I mean, it's the same vision. Like we want to be able to spend that quality time with family. We want to be able to um, to build that legacy, you know, with our kids, um, with other family members. We want to be able to help other family members that really need it. We want to be able to be more of a blessing to the to church and to the community. We want to be able to travel, right? We want to be able to, in in many cases, you know, build generational wealth. We want to change, in many cases, change generational cycles, right? So that our families are not, you know, I'm not sure what situation. I know mine wasn't a, a great one growing up, right? And I needed to change my generational cycle. And by the grace of God, I did that many, many, many years ago. But but people are, you know, are using this today to be able to do the same thing. And then, you know, to also nurture and grow the gifts and the passions that God's given you because now you have the finances to do that. You got the time back to yourself to do that. That's what Airbnb passive income is all about. So so that's the reason why you want to put your bank account information in when you are setting up your host account because the least amount of things that you have to touch and do personally, um, the better off you are. In the beginning, you're going to be doing more. Right. In the beginning, you want to be doing more. One of those things is not touching money. Let that money happen electronically. That's first and foremost. Let it happen electronically. Airbnb is a forty seven billion dollar company now. They went public a couple a couple months ago there. They can't afford to be doing silly things. I've been I've been doing Airbnb for nearly what for over four years now. And I have never had an issue with my account. Right. It, it's like clockwork, pretty much. So you can trust them. All right. Now, um, add additional acquire requirements for your guests. Agree to house rules. Yes, they have to do that. Message uh, you about their trip. Yes, you want that. And let you know how many guests are coming. Yes, you definitely want that. And confirm their check in time if they're arriving within two days. Right. So that's cool. So if you want additional requirements, yes, this is what we want. I want a government ID submitted. Right. And. Um, I want them also to be recommended by other hosts, right? So you could do that. However, this recommended by other hosts, um, I wouldn't put that in initially because you're going to be able to do that later. A lot of times you got you got people that are on Airbnb that are brand new. They've never used it because um, so so with that, you wouldn't necessarily want them recommended needed needing them recommended by. Uh, other hosts because they may be brand new, but you definitely want an air, uh, a government ID submitted to Airbnb. You want that. You want a fully verified guest in all your listings. Now, when you start doing instant book, like once you get more and more familiar with the process and how it works, and then you give people the ability to instant book your place where you don't have to, you don't, you know, you don't have to confirm everyone. Um, then you're going to one of the one of the requirements for instant book you're going to have on there is you want them recommended by other hosts. You don't want just anyone being able to instant book your place. You're still going to, you know, communicate with them once they do. But like while you're sleeping at night, you'll be having money coming in. Why? Because you're not required to to um, to 
approve everyone because they meet all the requirements that you you that you're okay with all right so now we'll go with that we'll go next and um set house rules so typically this is what i do now this is different for you guys um um if you want suitable for, if you want um them to be able to have children then um you can put you check that if you don't want them to have younger children in there you put um not suitable right um if you want so you can put suitable um suitable for infants you could do that if you want suitable for pets if you have pets or you're not then you just say no right if you want smoking allowed um or not um you say no um i say no to smoking they can smoke outside but they can't smoke inside and um and you could put that in the details or the house rules um and then events allowed um now this is going to be your choice right this is one of the reasons why people have issues with airbnb and have had issues because they are allowing people to come and have parties right and do those kinds of things i i i'm not going to tell you what to do i don't allow it right so your your call i'll put no events allowed and then um now you may have a space that that's what that's for for instance you may have a cabin or something out there that you're doing that type of stuff where or you may have tents right or or things where it's out there where it's not going to be a bother to anyone and people just really want to come out and and just you know have a a family reunion out there you may have that kind of space if you got that then great you know let them do it right um and now you've created a nice little niche for yourself and um and 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 you'll see what happens and see how that thing blows up and reach out to me and let me know um and if you need some help on how to how to do that stuff so that it is it's passive now um i'd love to help you with that so okay and then additional rules quiet hours yes there's always quiet hours so what we would say is um because again forget depending on where you're at like if you got neighbors and things, you definitely want quiet hours. So you could say from 12 a.m. Right to let's say 6 a.m. Boom. Right. Um, and then additional details. Hit add. Right. And then additional details. You put if there's stairs in the house, you got to click that. Um, and and if you just say you know how many flights, you know two flights. to bedrooms if the bedrooms are upstairs to uh two of the bedrooms so you can do that and then um if you know if you're in an area where you know it's in the city um you could just put potential for noise and just say um downtown has um you know events so there could be um you know activity at, in the evenings so you could put that in there and then um if you have pets on the property you could put that um if you don't have any parking there if you have um some shared spaces um where say for instance you live in the upstairs and um you know and you're sharing like uh for instance the backyard so you go in backyard is shared with tenants or if you have tenants in the upstairs apartment or, or in one of your apartments you can say now we said this is a whole house um but it's an apartment that's you probably what you would put in an apartment instead but that's fine it's still a whole house it's still um same you know entire space so uh with uh so backyard is shared with so we'll take that out because we don't have any shared space it's a whole house but that's what you would do right um and then amenity limitation surveillance recording now here's the thing if you have a camera on site with airbnb you want to make sure that you tell every guest that I mean you you have to identify and let people know that there is a camera. So if you got a camera, even if it's outside, um, uh, security camera outside, right? So 
And you gotta tell them where front entrance. And if you have one inside, you gotta put that in there too. You gotta let people know. Um, Airbnb will will ding you if you don't. Right? Um, weapons on property, no. Dangerous animals on property, no. Hit next. And I'm gonna back up though, cause well, yeah. If you now, so again, if you do have that, a lot of times, depending on you know um, where you are, you might want to have those. I, um, um, you know, and that does help. Um, if you have your your if you're doing single homes, you can have that security camera. That way, you can see who's coming and going, who's checking in and checking out from you know from another location, and you have apps. So that that's kind of cool when you if you want to do that, right? So then you have um, review your guest requirements, um, government ID, suitable, do boom, looks good, then boom. And then here's how the guests uh, will book with you. It says qualify guests, find your listing, set up controls for who can book. Um, I want to review every guest. So boom, you do that. And um, let's see. So how um, hosts who allow, uh, so basically this is saying um, if you want, instant book right you can click on that but you're not ready for that we'll just click so you can see but no you click on that no we want to allow we want to review every guest that's what we want to do and by the way so you know um um airbnb also provides you with a million dollar policy um as a host and it's free so you're going to get a million dollar policy against any um damages uh that um, any host, any guest uh, uh, does to the property. I could tell you that I've never, I've been doing, I've done tens of thousands of nights on Airbnb that I've hosted and um, and I've never had to uh, invoke that. So, um, um, so if you do this properly, you won't have to worry about it, but I just thought I'd tell you anyway, right? So we do that and then, and then it says here, are you sure you want all guests to send, uh, send requests? And then you go, um yes you're just checking to verify you know you only have 24 hours to respond your listings will be ranked lower in the search they tell you that because they do like it does it, it once you get familiar with the process then you can go always go back in to your listing and turn on instant book in the beginning i just honestly would not have you do instant book i would have you um um review every guest and then third um, it says you will lose some host protection controls. So penalty free. I, I wouldn't really worry about that. Just go ahead and put it on there. Allow qualified guests to book instantly. Um, if you just want, you know, if you're comfortable enough with the process and you want to um, do instant book, um, you could do that. And again, um, um, one way you can kind of kind of protect yourself is if you give yourself like a 24 to 48 hour booking window so that whoever does book instantly then um you still get to to see who they are right um you they already meet the qualifications right and uh if they don't meet your qualifications you can always have them cancel right so um so in fact you know what that's what we're gonna do we're gonna do that go back uh to to that create instant book because that's gonna get you uh, that's going to get you bookings um, very quickly and you'll be able to um, have those bookings canceled if they don't meet your qualifications, right? Um, meaning they're going to meet all the qualifications inside the automatic qualifications and as well, in fact, we go back, let's go back and we want to edit one more of the additional requirements and recommended by other hosts boom right there and so when you do that now um people cannot instant book if they haven't ha if they don't have a recommendation by other hosts right so that's what you want so then you do that then hit next and now you're all set and if you put a 24 to 48 hour window in there then you get to still uh survey everybody that's one of the things that we also do so um, let's see, uh, got it. I'll keep my calendar up to date. Successful hosting starts with an accurate calendar. Keep it up to date. Boom. And hopefully I didn't confuse you with that. Again, you can do it either way. If you don't want to have instant book on, don't put it on. Um, if you do, then go ahead and, and click. No, I want to, um, I do want to, uh, 
uh, review every listing or every guest. A lot of times people are still a little squirmish about that in the beginning. So you could put that on there and then put all those requirements in and make sure you don't put that, that requirement that they have to have other um, hosts because when you're not instant booking, you don't need that, right? So um, let's see. So you're going to put, am I new to this? I'm new to this. Um, have you rented out this place before? You could say I'm new to this. And then um, how often do you want your guests? Um, what I would say as often as possible, right? Because then Airbnb is going to send you as much and then you get to say yes or no, right? Because you get to control your calendar anyway. So don't don't worry about that. So now here's what I was telling you. How much notice do you need before a guest arrives? So once you get rolling, you we, you would just say same day. Like that's what we do, same day. But in your case, because you have, if you have instant book on, then you can go one day. Um, if there's no instant book, I would just say same day. But still, same thing. I would still just, you know, I mean, it's up to you. Once you get, once you get more familiar with the process, you can go to same day. But for now, just put one day in there. And then, when can guests check in? My standard is 3 p.m. They can start checking in, and. Um, they can check in all the way up until you know your decision. I typically go 10 p.m. Um, the reason why you don't want it to be later now is because at 12 in the morning, if a guest wants to check in at 12 a.m., like they'll request it if they really need to, and then you can you could say yeah, no problem. Just um, but you don't want neighbors and everything because people are brand new to this process and you having to give them check-ins and you're not going to be the one meeting them over there. I hope, right? If you're doing this properly, you're not going to be the one meeting them over there. You're just going to give them some, some instructions on how to get in. Um, but if you're going to be meeting them over there yourself personally, because that's what you want to do, um, then, you know, you want to, you want to adjust this, this time. But when you give people the ability to do it without you having to meet them, it's a great thing because now it frees you up, frees your time up, and um, and you can have later check-in dates. But you don't, I mean, check-in times. But you don't want it too late because if they run into an air an, an an issue at twelve o'clock midnight, you don't want your phone ringing, right? So um, so that's why we go three to ten. And um, and if they need to do it later, they'll text you and let you know, and you can authorize it and just you know just tell them. You know, you won't be available after 10. So if they run into a problem, that's going to be up on on them. However, it isn't, you know, it's not something that's common, but it is, you know, it is something that is always possible. So then you go next. And then um, how far in advance can they book, right? That's going to be up to you. Um, I typically go, you know, uh, six to nine months out. Um, but, you know, um, or you can go anytime, right? So six to nine months out, it's up to you. Six months is a good time. Um, and, uh, and then let's see, you go next and then how many night minimums? So it's up to you on this one. Me personally, I always do a, a minimum of uh, two nights because typically one night, um, unless you have, you know, a luxury place or something like that, it's not worth it. It's not worth the headache. Right. One night isn't worth the headache. If you got like something special, a special, you know, um, uh, niche that you're dealing where you're giving people, you know, the ability to come in with seven or eight people. And it's just like a, a an event that you're allowing them to do or at your 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 um, your space, which is a little bit different then you can give them, you know, one night because you're making, you know, maybe five hundred dollars in that one night. But I typically don't do more than less than one night. All right. Um, because uh, so that and then the number of max nights, like I don't have a max. Like if they want to stay more than than 30, 60 days, that that's great. But um, what you could do is you could still put 30 um, nights max. Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. So then go next. And then um, let's see, set your calendar availability. So um, so what I would typically do is. Um, for the month of March, if you're starting, depending on, cause we're just getting ready to start with March. And if your place isn't really ready yet, then just block out, think about how long it's going to take you to get your place ready. And you don't have to go and change everything in your house. You don't have to do that, right? You just want to make sure the space is neat. That's all. And, um, and so you might want to block out the, let's see, uh, just highlight those days. 
block them out if you need a week. And then when your calendar is up, those first few days will be blocked out. And everybody that's going to be looking at your listing will be looking at everything from the 7th to the 28th. And they'll be booking. And that'll be great. Gives you more enough time to get it set up. So that's it. And then um, the price of your space. Uh, what you want to do in here is I personally do not like smart smart pricing. Um, um, if you want to get uh, if you want to get, it's, it's up to you. Um, but I, I don't, I don't personally use smart pricing. So, um, so you put a base rate in there. Um, you know, Airbnb provides tips. Um, I do it a little bit differently, which I, I'm not going to get into in this training. Um, because that's again, part of, of, of what we do on the optimization side, but, um, Airbnb is giving you a tip of $78. So you put that in there, um, as a, as a base price. Um, and the base basically means what it is always set at. And if you're going to do auto pricing, then what you're going to want to do in here is you want to put um, the minimum price in here that it can go to because Airbnb will put, you know, um, will put uh, a low minimum if you don't put anything in there because they want to get as many bookings as possible. Right. And then a high. You want to be smart. This says two hundred thirty five dollars. But if, if you got a tip where it says seventy eight dollars is your base price in that area for your place and um per night and then this is saying 235 dollars is the high like you really um i wouldn't go all the way up to that i might i might go maybe double but that that's kind of pushing it so i'd say maybe 150 right they, they're kind of pushing it and then put your currency in there and or if you just want to use the base price only you could do that as well um that's what i do honestly but um if you want to fool around with it um you can do that and then just um just uh use uh that and then test it and then from a from an offer your first guess like airbnb recommends you do this 20 percent off your first guess recommended like you could do that and airbnb what they'll do is they'll push your listing out to everybody right so your first three guests will get a 20 percent off discount and then you'll get your first booking pretty doggone quickly however um you can also put don't add a special offer right and and if you don't do that it'll still push it out it just won't push it out as much so it says this here it says this special offer will attract your first guest and help your first guest uh, help you get your first resu reviews which is important because once you get those reviews going that's part of the optimization that i teach once you get reviews going then airbnb recognizes that you know okay this is a is a is a um a qualified listing that that's making us money people have um you know, have good experience with this place, let's send it out even more, right? And so, um, um, but you want to be able to get your five-star reviews. And again, that's a separate training, but there's a way to get your five-star reviews every time. And um, and when you get that, then your ability to become a super host, you, you, that happens within the first 30, 60 days for my students. Most of their Airbnb hosts that are doing this just kind of you know, by trial and error, typically takes them six months to a year to become a super host. So um, let's see. So here, search results and get an average of 3.6 times more bookings in their first month. So basically, it's just telling you when you add this, you're going to get much higher bookings your first month. So that's what we want. So why don't we, uh, we'll go with that for now. Um, and then it tells us you're going to share your, they're going to share your offer. Um, so they're going to be sending that to people all, all throughout the world, um, about, about your 20%. And then, um, and then your offer be available to the first, uh, to the first three guests. So, um, so that's what you're going to get. So you go next and then weekly discounts. Typically what I do 10% weekly, I'm sorry, 10% month weekly, 5% weekly and 10% monthly, all right? They say a tip, 21%. You could do that. If you do the 21% and the 49% monthly, like you're still gonna make money, but like that, to me, that's kind of crazy. Um, when, you, when you go buy Airbnb's tips, they'll send your stuff out more. And so if you're really, really looking to get your first bookings very quickly, go buy their tips. But if you even just, you know, um, you know, reduced it, then, um, you know, to half that amount, they will still send your stuff out. But if you take exactly what their tip is, they're really going to send it out. So it's your choice. I I'll stick with what I normally do. Um, but I can also do less by, because I got, you know, nearly a thousand reviews and, um, at least on this account and, 
Um, and I got a lot of, you know, I got a lot of momentum as far as the algorithm is concerned. So it's going to send my stuff out anyway. You can put higher numbers to begin. You can always go back in and change it. And then you go there and it says, based on your settings, here's what you can expect. You're available, you're available, you're available to host starting March 7th. Um, lose planning or trip. Guests are recommended by other hosts. They need to have a, a government ID submitted. The guests can send a message with their booking confirmation. The guests, uh, you'll welcome guests into your space. Um, and, and before they arrive, basically, they're going to get the, the details, the check-in. And then guess what? You're going to get paid as well. And Airbnb only gets three cents on every dollar. So for every dollar that we make, Airbnb takes three cents, right? For every hundred dollars, they take three. For every thousand dollars, they take 30. So they're not making a lot of money on our side from these listings, right? We're making the bulk of it. Um, so it's more than worth it, right? We do that. And then it says your local laws. So wherever you're at, um, it's going to have, you know, your local laws in here if you want to read it, you know, taxes. But Airbnb, like, um, um, you can read through this. I mean, you know, this is just extra stuff you want to know about. But if there's an issue where you're restricted, it'll it'll have it in big red letters in here somewhere and then you'll have to read up on it and know what the restrictions are okay so then that's it you hit next and then it says finishing your listing to start earning finish your listing to start earning uh earning uh money so it's basically saying everything is done in here except what the photos right so now that is pretty much done right you want to add photos and you do not need a professional photo shoot on your place. All you need is a couple of simple photos to get your listing started, right? So if you got a picture of your house on the exterior, you want to use that. Get a nice little picture of your house, the exterior. Get a couple photos on the interior of your home as well. You don't even need the bedrooms on there. If the bedrooms aren't ready, right, you just put a picture of your living room, your kitchen, your bathroom, right? The common area, even if there's no furniture in there, just put, put a couple of those pictures up, put a picture of the exterior of the house, and you can even put a picture of the area as well, right, in there. And um, and then, boom, you just add those. Um, I'm gonna upload a few photos, let's see. So here you can upload them. They don't need to be uh, perfect images, right? Um, oh, here's, a, here's an image. I'll just do this just for kicks. That's what... <laughs> His tent looks like $50 a night. He's getting that, right? $50 a night. Um, we're going to go, uh, we're going to add another one. So that's your cover photo. You don't need that as a cover. We're going to, um, well, you could always go back and change them. So, um, so once you, once you add a photo, you can hit publish listing. Um, let's go back to edit. We're going to go to photos. So we're going to edit photos and we're going to change that cover photo. Um, we're going to delete uh let's see oh i'm sorry when you add the photo now you can also add others um and so uh what you'll do is i'm just looking for some images so these are images of um where i mentioned um the timeshare right that one of my students has and um and so you can add those or if you just as i said you can just go ahead and add um images of you know of your home and if you got a you know if you got a nice image of an area um of your location that would be good too you put that in there so um then and we want to change the cover photo so what we'll do is we'll change that um let's see And we'll, you know, you can make whatever photo you want to be the cover. And change it out just like that. Simple, right? And then, um, and, and then you go next. And then, boom, you hit publish listing and you got your listing published. You can hit preview to see what it looks like. It should have changed my cover, but it didn't change it. I don't know why. We can always go back in and switch it out. But um, let's take a quick peek and see. 
Um, cause you can always go back into edit listing. So we go to photos one more time, right? And it didn't do that. So I'm going to delete that. Why don't we just delete it? Yep. And then there you go. So now changes that image and you can hit preview and there you go, right? That's your, your listing, right? And you can always go back in and edit it anytime. Um, it, as you notice, it put $55 a night as our low because we have what? We have auto pricing in there on. Um, you can change that anytime you want. And then um, and then that's it. So that's the basics of getting your Airbnb listing up, getting it um, live and, um, uh, and starting to generate money whenever you want. Right. Um, it says here seven guests, three bedrooms, four beds, one and a half baths. That's what we talked about. Um, beautiful Rochester area. That's what we put in there. And again, um, as I said, once it's up now, it's generating income for you 20, 24-7 because that algorithm wants you to make money. Peaceful getaway, Rochester, New York area, near everything. Right. That's it. Like that's what you want to do. Obviously, you're gonna change. You know, make sure you have the the right photos in there. But but you see how that looks, right? Um, and then you go back, and then you hit publish listing, and um, and it says guests can first starting can start to arrive uh, March seventh. And the reason why is because that's we block out that whole week, so people can start booking today once you hit publish listing. Um, and I would publish listing even if you don't have the perfect pictures yet. Just put a couple pictures in there now and then um, and then just hit publish anyway. Because once you start updating your pictures, like you don't want to wait until you have the perfect pictures. Get just one or two pictures in there and then you can always go back in and start updating your pictures and putting more pictures in. But now at least the, the, the listing is up. It's starting to generate um, to let the algorithm know and once the algorithm starts getting used to your listing being in then as you start adding your your other images it's going to um, it's going to update your images quickly and then people uh, will will see those as well and but you're not waiting until everything is perfect because when you do that it'll never be perfect so just get the first couple you only need two or three images in there to get started and then you can add them later but if you got all those other things then you're gonna be good to go you t go to the download right that i have um in uh uh the description below and um and i want you or or message me if you don't have if you don't have an, an if there is no description message me and um and request the cheat sheet right i'm going to give you the cheat sheet and um and once i see that you actually publish if you want to message message me as well and i see that you also use that link um, so that I can uh, be the ambassador that helps you, then um, then what I'll do is I'll get you some other cool stuff relating um, to uh, to Airbnb passive income if you're really looking to grow. Um, and it's free resources, but if you're really looking to grow and really simplify um, uh, your life and using Airbnb as a as a way to do that, like we like I do, and many of my students actually in 24 different countries um, uh, do. So with that said, I want to say. It was great. Thank you for allowing me to uh, uh, to have the privilege of, of sharing this information with you. Um, and um, it, it's always an honor and and a privilege for me to share the gifts that God's blessed me with um, with others, so that uh, the things that have changed my life and my family's life um, can also do that for you as well. So um, so go ahead, take it, use it, get it up and running, and definitely reach out to me. I I love to know. Um, you're, uh, when you're having uh, the success. So God bless you, and I'll talk to you hopefully sometime in the near future. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. It's Jim. I hope you're enjoying the series of videos that I'm putting out. There's a couple that I put out before this, a couple that I'm putting out after as well. It's all real informative stuff to help you um, in your journey with Airbnb Passive Income. And if you do enjoy it, I'd ask you to do a couple things. One, to, if you're if we're on air, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and share the video, um, and subscribe to the channel. And if you're not on YouTube, go ahead over to the channel and um, subscribe, like and share the video. If you want to be updated on on all the new uh, videos that are going to be coming up, as well as getting the the uh, the other ones that will also help you along along your uh, your journey of Airbnb uh, 
creating Airbnb passive income to, to be able to support the vision that God's given you for your life. And, um, and then also, I don't know if you know, but we also have, I also have a semi-private group um, where, you know, we're in there and we share a lot of things um, in the group. Uh, you're able to, to, to kind of see more of what this, what my students are doing and, um, and also what some of the other folks that are doing that are just trying to get started and, 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 you know, and, and getting some help um, without actually being a part of the, uh, my academy. And so you can actually go over to that group. It's my Facebook group and you'll find the, uh, the link uh, to that group in, in the description below. And so, and if you're already in it, great. You're already in the group, you know what we're doing and glad to have you. Now, the last thing is this, if you're already in the group or if you're not in the group and um, you're not a student, you know, and you like the information that uh, the free information that I'm sharing and you, you feel like maybe this would be a great fit for you as far as being able to, you know, do Airbnb passive income without owning property, then schedule a a one on one with me. I'd love to meet with you. As you know, I love helping people start and grow their five thousand to fifteen thousand dollar a month Airbnb passive income business without banks, without experience, and without owning property. And so. Yeah, schedule schedule an opportunity. I'd love to, as I said, I'd love to meet with you one on one, and you know we can see if it's a good fit. I can, um, you know, give you some more information, some background about the academy and how everything works. And if it is a great fit, and I'm able to give you an invitation because my academy is invitation only. But if I'm able to give you an invitation, then I give you an invitation, get you enrolled, and get you started today. And with that said, I want to thank you for watching, and I look forward to meeting with you and working with you in the very near future. God bless you.